Hello, welcome to the school quest session. Please give me a thumbs up or a quick uh, note in the chat box to make sure you can hear me. I'm going to test my technology before I fully launch into the platform. I am joining you from central Pennsylvania today. Hi, Kim. And we are mid PCS, well, tail end of the PCS. So I'm joining you from our hotel room. I've safely stowed the cat and I'm hoping that housekeeping doesn't interrupt, but if it does, we'll just roll with it. I appreciate how everyone has been so flexible with technology now that we're um, doing this virtually. And it's just great that we have this, this option. So I want to thank everybody for joining today. I know quite a bit of people have registered for SchoolQuest during this conference, and maybe you'd like the tour to go with that registration. So thanks for stopping into this session. And first and foremost, I want to start by thanking USAA. They have generously made SchoolQuest possible. The entire website that we're going to show you today would not have been possible without USAA's support. So we want to thank them for their belief in this project and for always supporting military families and students. Also, you've been in some of these sessions. You may know there's a poll in the top right corner of your screen. Would love it if you would take that poll. I believe there's a question at the start and a question at the end. And I know that we have parents and uh, education professionals joining us today. I'd love to know how you're connected to supporting military children. So please put that in the chat box so we can virtually get to know each other. And I will introduce myself. I am Jenny Rasmussen. I have been with MSEC uh, off and on since 2007 as we made various moves. We are an active duty military family and we are at the tail end of our 11th move. I have a rising 10th grader a rising sixth grader and a kindergartner now. So I am the prime target for using this platform as well. And I was pleased when I joined um, MSEC at Fort Hood when we moved there to be asked to work on this project for them. I want everyone to know that the site is free to use. Again, thanks to USAA. It is designed with military families and students in mind, but we believe that it's useful for all students and all families. We know we're not the only population of families that move frequently, um, and we really believe that the academic information in it is useful for all students. The other thing I'd like you to know is I would love to do a virtual tour like this for your school or your network of people. So please contact us if you would like to set that up. My email address, um, we can put that in the chat box. You can contact us at schoolquest at militarychild.org or jenny.rasmussen at militarychild.org. And MSEC, we always want user feedback. Every time I give a tour of the website, I get to hear people brainstorm about how they might use it in new and original ways that maybe I didn't think of before. So I appreciate feedback on the content, especially from folks that are subject matter experts. And anything we can do to improve the site, anything you especially love about the site, please let us know. You can send feedback by email or after you use the site, you'll notice that there is a pop-up for a survey. And it is a key method that we have to tell our funders, USAA, what we're doing and what you think of the, the tool and how we can tweak things to make it better so we can continue to offer the very best information on the website. And don't forget to register for School Quest so you'll be entered into the giveaway. We have one more drawing. At the end of the walkthrough, we can open it up for questions and answers. Uh, you can also put any questions you have in the chat box as we go. We have a couple of folks from MSEC here with me today to help us with that chat box. So feel free to go ahead and use that feature even as I walk through 
the website. And at the bottom of the session screen, there are a couple of website links that give a brief overview of the website and uh, information for different audiences, for parents and for counselors, school counselors. So feel free to copy those links and bookmark those so that you can easily share them with your network of folks. And more marketing information is available in the Expo section of Attendify under MSEC Advocate. So again, welcome to our virtual walkthrough on this academic and transition tool, SchoolQuest. We've been working for a long time on the design and on the content to bring this to reality, and we are excited to talk about it a lot at NTS. We uh, know that military parents, students, and educators who work with military kids need reliable information. And before School Quest, you might have been scouring the internet and just had to trust that what you found was reliable. But as a Military Child Education Coalition, we like to collect the best practices and the best information and put it all in one place for you in School Quest. I truly believe that this is a game changer for military families. We designed it with two purposes in mind. The first, of course, was easing the transition stress and the frustrations of school transitions when you PCS. The other one was achieving academic goals that, that students have for school and for life after high school. We originally designed the site for families who have students in middle and high school, because that is where most of the school transition issues occur, especially the ones that can delay graduation. But we got feedback from users that they wanted to set up profiles for their younger students as well. So of course, much of our features, those will be beneficial for families with younger school-aged children, but you might find that the resources are designed mostly with middle and high school families uh, using the tool. So without further ado, I'm gonna share my screen. And the first thing that I'm gonna share with you is the registration walkthrough. So I already have a registration set up and I will show that to you as well from here. But first I wanted to show you this landing page that gives that overview and it includes some user feedback that we've gotten again from that survey that you can take. And you can put a question here if there are things you wanted to know more about and that will get to us also. But if you've never registered for School Quest before, it's a pretty fast and easy registration. So I am going to set one up right now. You may know we used to have a feature called Aunt Peggy. And show you what is behind the registration. So anything marked with an asterisk, we uh, set that as required to use. And what we do with that information is use it to report to our funder, to USAA, that we're reaching all um, varieties of military connected families and that our demographics match up as much as possible. When you select a country here, if you are moving outside the continental United States, when you select that country, then it will give you um, some ODEA school information there. So we're going to say Texas City. Oops in Lubbock today. And again, this uh, is really just to say that we're reaching everyone. Scroll down, you see we've even added Space Force. And you can add additional recovery emails if you um, forget your password or if you want to share the account. The weekly digest, when we add new content to SchoolQuest, then an email comes out every week. And so you can opt in to receive that email so you can see what's new and go in and check if uh, it catches your eye and it's something useful for you. The checklist item do 
reminder. So the checklists inside of the checklist library are customizable, and I'll show you that. And you can set due dates and push them to your digital calendar. You can also get an email that reminds you you have an upcoming due date. And then sometimes we just want to let users know some things. You can opt into that. And if I'm planning to move, I can say yes. And it'll ask me a little bit about that move information so that the website then delivers some customized content for you. So we're going to say 2022. It could be a mid-year move, but let's hope it's going to be a May move. We're going to stay continental. And let's move today. How does Tennessee sound? It's not too far of a drive. And then I can add even more than one move. So if that's just a one year, or I want to explore more state information than just that year, I can put that in as well. So let's move from there to Kansas. What do you say? And then the registration will ask me to create a student profile. And there are a lot of features that need to be tagged to a student. And there's that survey pop-up window. So please, 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 when you see that, give us some feedback. You can even open it in a new tab so you don't have to interrupt what you're doing. It does not take long to fill out at all. So then from here, you would create that student profile, and I'll show you what that looks like from my other account. So I'm going to stop sharing and switch screens for a minute now that I've shown you hopefully um, what is a quick and easy registration process. And in order to share the other one, I'm going to close that one. I see someone's joining us from Arizona. Let's see. Make the platform cooperate with me. There it is. All right. Now you should be able to see my family's dashboard with our three children. Names change to protect the innocent. So within, and there's my stored login. Within this platform, when I choose a student, you'll see the student profile. So she's just finished ninth grade, and she's just finished ninth grade in Texas. Every student profile receives three standard checklists. And if you don't find them useful, you can delete them. But I'll show you what these three standard checklists are. The first is gathering student documents for a physical or a digital portfolio. Now, I'm kind of an old school army wife, and I've got a three ring binder with papers falling out of it and page protectors full of years of orders. And all of these things are in there. But for some of our new military families moving, they may, might not already have these all collected. So the checklist gives you the standard things you'll need to keep together for each student. And again, you can customize these. So when I said school transcripts, I put in the school that I needed to pick it up from and the date that I needed to pick it up so that it would push it to my digital calendar and remind me. Um, and so I would get that alert when I was behind. As you can see, I'm quite a bit behind on that one. When we say we recommend um, digitizing this, we've provided that inside of the platform. So across the top here on this navigation bar, if you click on files, you'll see where we recommend digitizing that. We've connected to Dropbox, which you may be familiar with, offers a free account. And when it connects to Dropbox, I want to reassure you that all of that information is stored in Dropbox. It's not stored inside of SchoolQuest. And so all of the privacy and security features are Dropbox's privacy and security features. We chose to partner it with Dropbox because their security features most closely aligned with what we imagined users uploading. For instance, it had the ability to protect a little better around HIPAA and things like that. So when I upload something into my Dropbox, 
and connect my Dropbox to SchoolQuest, it creates a folder called Apps and then a folder called SchoolQuest. And then it gives me a window into that folder in Dropbox. And what I have the ability to do from SchoolQuest is to click the file and it downloads to whatever device I'm on and I can then quickly and easily attach it to an email or I know a lot of schools have gone to digital registrations, I can then upload it that way. I've heard lots of moving horror stories of how the movers get to the do not pack corner and pack up the important documents or things get stolen as you're in the process of moving. So we really do encourage families to digitize those documents as well as keep them hard copy. And then if, you know, Dropbox isn't your preferred cloud library, we've got other options here. It just won't provide that same window connection there. So going back to my family's dashboard and back to Erica, my student's profile, I'll show you a few other things here. Credits towards high school graduation checklist is another standard checklist that every student profile receives. And you'll see here that the entire list um, gives all those recommended credits. So MSEC has looked at the graduation requirements for all 50 states, DODEA and DC, and we've looked at what colleges are really looking for in a strong application, if that's what your student intends to do after high school. And of course you can keep a record in, of all of this on your school transcript, but sometimes it's nice to just have this quick and easy view when you sit down to register for courses, you can have this discussion with your student. And we actually discussed it this week, recording what she had completed in ninth grade, since she's now finished with ninth grade. And I can put, for example, if she completed an algebra course in middle school, I can record that here, the year in the school, so I know which transcript to verify that with or which school, if any future school has a problem with the transcript, where to go back and check that credit. And I can even add a task. So I know a lot of states have added on a civics exam. So if we are in a state that does that when she's ready to graduate, I can add that task and a due date as well. All of those customizable due dates, printable checklist, etc. So going back to Erica's student profile, Here's another checklist that I chose from her from the checklist library, and it was things she needed to do in ninth grade. Now, this might be a part of your frequent dinner table conversations like it is in my family, but we also know that you have to hear things more than once, and sometimes you have to hear them from more than one source, right? So here is that checklist, and I can print that out, or she can work with it online as well. And I can add more checklists. Let me show you a brief view of our checklist library. Some checklists are seasonal, seasonally more frequently used. So I have the ability to mark those as featured in the back end of the platform so that they stand out a little more at times you might need them a little more. So for example, when FAFSA season opens up, we'll mark that as featured so it'll stand out. We have a middle school, um, checklists for roadmap to success and one for each grade in high school. Those withdrawal and enrollment checklists there, using those education benefits checklist for that. Getting ready to fly the nest, things that you need to know to leave home and start in a different place. So those are checklists that you can add and you can also create a custom checklist with all of the tasks on it once you write. That's our checklist feature. Let me show you more of the student profile. What happens when you set up that student profile? Notes uh, are tagged to a student. So this is from our school search that I'll show you in just a minute. And then we have notes that are any topic you choose as well. Within every student profile, there's the Student Quest Academic Tracker. So here's a place where you can explore information on different school types. I know that in one district, a magnet school locally might have been the best fit for her, and in a different state, in a different district, it might be a different type of school. So when you want to explore that information about the school types, this takes you to our resource library. And anything like this look, has three tabs across the top. 
things to know, questions to ask, and helpful links. And things to know is just a broad overview to get you started with information. Questions to ask is questions to guide your further research into that topic and those specific charter schools that you're looking at. And helpful links, these are MSEC vetted resources, links trusted and vetted there for you. So going back, that was school type. And again, you can explore all those different school types. Then we have the high school graduation plan. This is printable or you can save it to your device. And it's MSEC's recommendations aligned with that checklist, but in this chart kind of format. And I will say that we strongly recommend that you take the most rigorous course that you can be successful at. It's no good to take um, an extremely hard load of AP courses and get all C's in it. So you can adapt that plan to your student and your needs. And then we have that plan also as a six year plan for our middle school students. And then we believe all families should know about the Military Interstate Compact. So we put that resource inside of every student profile. And it's that same format, things to know, broad overview. Of course, it's an important compact, so that overview is a bit longer. Questions to ask to guide your research into that topic and its application to your family and helpful links on that. We want every family to know what the compact is, what it covers and what it doesn't so that you can advocate for yourself and your student. So that relocation information is stored here. It's also stored at the top on this relocation tab. So we'll look at that in just a minute. I wanted to show you more. I registered her on SchoolQuest when she was in eighth grade. So here's her eighth grade school information. If I ever wanna find a past school address, I can easily find that here and all of the choices I made for her to explore then. But now uh, she's moved on to ninth grade and I have her ninth grade school information. Can even add a school. We know that some people move mid-year and there's a need to store two schools information for that type of situation. And every student gets these three topics in the resource library that we think are important for them. How to build a relocation portfolio, important information about transcripts and credits, and great tutorial resources for a variety of subjects. And those again have that same things to know, questions to ask, and helpful links format. But I can customize this student profile to the student and to the current grade that they're in. So the ninth grade options that I might choose, you'll see here when I click this, then I make choices inside of this. So in ninth grade, I want to begin to explore the academic resume and academic portfolio and college essay, things like that. I can also um, copy over her eighth grade choices and then I could select them or deselect them. There's a lot of choices there to customize that profile. And all of these are, for, are, are excuse me, formatted again, and that things to know, questions to ask, helpful links. So for example, if she's playing sports in middle and high school, information on how best to transition sports, how to make an athletic portfolio, great information there that our team compiled. So that is the student academic tracker and the information that's located there. I'd like to show you, I've shown you the checklists in the library and here's just a view from here of all the checklists I have. Tagged, each one of course is tagged to a student. Here's the school search feature. We know that there are a lot of great websites out there that give you information about schools. So you can explore them here. We recommend that you look at the National Center for Education Statistics and search up school um, report cards. And we give a little bit of information about things to look at in that school report card. It can be helpful to compare student to teacher ratios, testing results, graduation rates, um, how much they spend per student. Those are some of the things in that report you might want to compare. 
And then we have a link for great schools and niche, some popular sites with families for searching. And also we got some feedback that DoDEA schools don't always show up on those websites. So we have a link for the DoDEA schools search function as well. And then once I explore those in another tab, I come back here and I take some notes so that I can compare them. And then when I'm ready to sit down um, and discuss with Erica about which school might be the best match for her, I can have all that information at my fingertips. So it's tagged to a student because not all the students in my family are going to the same school, all different ages. I um, put all my notes under the school name. And then this is where I took notes myself. And great schools, it was rated six out of 10 for you know whatever that rating means. I can compare it across different schools from the same platform that we loved, the atmosphere of the school. And actually we know some people who graduated from Carlisle Area High School, including her grandmother. So that was fun. And then I can save the URL here. I can save more than one. And since she's interested in sports, I can attach images that I find of the sports complex and different um, mascots if I wanted to show her later. Take all those notes, save them, and then when we sit down to have that conversation, it's all there ready for me. So that's our school search feature. Here's our resource library. We are always adding content to this resource library. And when we do add content, it gets marked as new. And then we have that same featured tag here for some seasonally important resources. Right now, I believe that the relocation portfolio is important for everyone. We've added some of our recent webinars. And if you click here, you'll find the link to register and view the recording of that webinar. But also, you can get the PDF resource from that webinar there. In the resource library, you can search with the search bar here, or you can clear it out and filter by grade level and by subject. And really, I find this probably the most useful to explore the resource library here. You can choose a subject, or you can even filter by format. Uh, someone told me there was a webinar. I remembered half the title, and I want to find it, so I could filter that way. Or by location, again, all 50 states all the states at once, DoDEA and DC options there for that search function. And we've even added a few of our resources that our Spanish language team has translated for us. So just a few resources there in Spanish for folks. That's our resource library, but we got feedback from users that um, really, they wanted more information about scholarships. So. We'll give a second for my internet to catch up. And I'll show you the scholarships page. After the user feedback, we created a scholarships page, a little like that school search page, where we reference FastWeb. We really encourage you to set up a profile there and use their functions for searching and for matching with scholarships. And take notes here about which ones you plan to apply for, which ones you qualify for. But also then it pulls our scholarship resources. It filters our resource library specific with scholarships, anything tagged scholarships. And if you click that button at the bottom, it takes you here to all those resources tagged. Now I'm working now on loading in some state specific resources on scholarships. I'm from Georgia and because I'm from Georgia and because I used it, I know that Georgia has a state legislature funded program for um, universities and um, college and technical school. So I have that in the platform, but if I'm not from Indiana and we move there, I might not have already known that Indiana has something similar. So I'm working on loading in that information for the states of state funded grants and scholarship programs. So if you know of one and you want to make sure it's in there, please be sure to email me. And then we have that branch specific scholarships link. And I'll show you this. I think we have some slows in here. Let's see. Here's our slows are always giving out great information like this. We have another one that links to a database that our slows compiled. I think it's on my second page. Military Connected Scholarships. The, this is from the Army School Liaison Officers website. 
um, other branches. I know y'all are represented here today. If you have a similar link for your branch, we would love it. We would love to reference it here. So be sure to email me. Love that website that the school liaison officers have put together. So that's from the scholarships page and then that resource link at the bottom filters all those to scholarships. Our notes function you'll see here is all the notes tagged to any student. You can access them here and you can create one separate from the school notes or the scholarship notes and create your own topics. So I'm storing a track schedule here. And another thing we had talked about with students was volunteer hours, storing those volunteer hours you know, you frequently turn them into the school and you may or may not keep a copy for yourself, but you want to be able to report those cumulative hours. There's our file feature that we looked at. Now I want to show you the relocations feature and then we'll take questions and talk about the tool some more. So we recently moved from Texas to Pennsylvania don't have our house yet but i'll put that in and then we don't know it's just a one-year assignment we don't know where the army's going to send us next but i can dream and i can dream that it's going to be back to uh closer to our parents but i could also add in another one to look at there when i tell it that georgia is a possibility it gives me this here the georgia transition information and this is in the resource library as well we have one of these for all 50 states, for DC and ODEA, transition information. And we wanted to compile the most frequently needed websites when you're transitioning to that state. So we start with the MIC-3 commissioner profile. If we um, know that sometimes there are issues that arise and we always recommend that people start to resolve them locally and work with their school liaison officer, but there may be a time when it needs to rise a level above and you need to contact your state commissioner. And so that's how you find that information and what the state agreed to in the compact. Each state's Department of Education website, and if they have a military um, family resource website, we put that here as well. Georgia's Purple Star Schools is actually called Military Flagship Schools. So you can find that list of those schools that have been awarded that designation. A quick overview of the state graduation requirements if it fit into my chart, but a lot of times the state's requirements don't fit into my handy chart here, but always the primary source for those state graduation requirements and if there's an exam required for graduation. Exceptional learner policies for the state. Uh, if there's a policy in place for gifted, then you can find that um, and policies for special needs. And then we aim to update these in the January to April timeframe every year for those um, PCS moves in the summer. Mandated assessments and the testing cycle information, every state calls it something different. And guidelines for school start dates, so you know when to get there, enrollment information, immunization information, school choice information, school type information, homeschool information, and the legal information about it. And what all of our teenagers want to know, when can I drive? Those learners' permits don't cross state lines. Um, when can I get my driver's permit? So again, that lives in our resource library and you can find it there with the search function. But if you, when you register, say you're anticipating a move, then it will populate that within your account right here. Then MIC3 resources, an overview of all the 50 states graduation requirements. I will tell you that this was last updated in, I believe, 2018 or 2019. But we uh, take a look at those for each state every year and verify that. And then finding your next school takes you back to the school search feature. So I am going to stop sharing and discuss with you what you saw and what you think and how you might use it. So let's see if there were questions in the chat box. 
see if my chat box caught up. Any questions in the chat box? Morgan, anything you'd like to see there for EFMP families, be sure to let us know if there's content that you think would be valuable and we don't have it in there yet. I would love that. Don't forget to take the poll. The second question in the poll should be live. Got some folks from Arizona. Got our Air Force school liaison officer from Charleston. Cherry Point Marine. Love it. School liaison officer from Travis Air Force Base. Hi, Christian. All right. No questions at this point. I would love for um, you to share this as widely as you can with your network if you see that it is useful for military families. We really want to get the word out um, so that we can ease the stress for transition and so that our military students are college work and life ready. Um, I appreciate your time. I know I maybe have not uh, used up all my time, but if you, oh, question from another session. Is there an option for a district or a school to sign up for an account? Absolutely. This is not just for families and students. A school counselor, a school administrator, a district administrator, um, anybody can sign up and register. Again, they don't even have to be military. It is free to use and they can set up example accounts uh, for their students or they can set up accounts for their students and work with their students. We would love for them to walk students through the tool, to use the resources in the tool to help them also. Any feedback um, you have, please be sure to send it to us. I will also tell you that our MSEC Facebook account shares about it almost every Monday. And so please feel free to share those in your network as well. Um, explore it, tell me what your favorite feature is, give us feedback, um, invite me to your network and, and we'll give a tour for your network also if you'd like. Yes, absolutely. Dr. Farmer, you can set up test accounts. So if you work with students of various ages, uh, you could have an account for each age group and explore that. Um, I will say again that it was initially designed with middle and high school students in mind and with those academic issues that arise with transitions and not being able to graduate on time. But we do know they're not the only age groups that have uh, transition issues, especially for our um, EFMP and um, exceptional needs students gifted, of course, varies from state to state and district to district as well. And just being prepared for um, school enrollment, school withdrawal at those ages, parent-teacher conferences, all of that is important for those age groups and those families as well. And I'm going to put my email address in the chat box. Feel free to email me any other questions you have as you explore it. Any um, resource suggestions for our resource library would also be um, welcome.
And I'll wait here just a minute or two longer. I know we still have about 20 minutes set aside for our session, uh, but I am willing to close out the session um, early and give you more time back if you'd like. Nobody has other questions, but here if you need me. All right, I don't see any other questions or comments in the box, so I'm going to end the session. Thank you. Thank you for your participation. Thank you for spreading the word. Thank you to USAA for funding the website for us. We appreciate 